Hello everybody, it's me, Ghost Critic. Thank you for coming to my channel. Now, if you were on Twitter last Sunday, I think if you were following either myself, Dr. Monkeybot, or Laras, that you couldn't have failed to miss that we were at London Comic Mart. Um, it was a kind of highs and lows kind of day because... Although it was great because I got to meet Adam and Rasser again um, and we managed to go for a drink all together for a change and what did we chat about? Of course we chatted about comics and comic book movies and all that like and it was great having uh, some kind of free time just sitting there having a chat with people. Um, we were a little bit disappointed at the size of London Comic Mart this month. Um, I think mainly because it coincided with London Comic Con and I think a lot of the vendors had gone there instead of staying where they normally are. So instead of having two big huge rooms full of gorgeous long boxes of 50p bargains for us to kind of pillage there was one room and pickings let's be honest was very slim um i know um adam dr monkeybot uh, really kind of focused then on his kind of old avengers and x-men runs that he's trying to fill in um, so i think he came away uh, with some pretty damn good deals I went there hopefully to buy um, lots of Conan because I'm very much into Conan at the moment, especially the Dark Horse stuff, and fill in some of uh, my kind of gaps in various runs I'm trying to collect. Um, I did okay. Um, I can't complain because I still came back with about five or six bags bursting with comic books. Um, I probably could have come back with twice as much if there had been twice as many vendors. Um, so it's an interesting haul. Um, I've finished off some runs. I've started a couple of new ones. Um, got some big batches to um, help me on my way to completing um, runs. But um, yeah, it was an interesting day. Um, and for me, who only goes maybe once or twice a year, it was a bit of a letdown personally for me. Um, but I came back, like I said, with loads of new comics to read and enjoy. And this is what this video is all about. I'm going to show you what I picked up. I split it into three. The first part is going to be all the kind of odds and ends from the um, other publishers. Um, there's going to be a batch of DC. And then the bulk of it is Marvel. Um, and I'll explain why that is um, as the video progresses. So hope you find something that you enjoy watching in this whole video. Let's get on with it. Okay, so let's kick off firstly with all the kind of odds and ends that I picked up at London Comic Mart. Um, these come from all different of the um, smaller publishing companies. Going to keep DC and Marvel separate. Um, we've got issue 13 of Brian Michael Bendis and Michael Avonoming's Powers from volume 2. Um, thought I'd pick up a little bit of Godzilla. Um, this is great, actually, art-wise, because it's a fully painted issue um, by Eglinton here. Issue number two of the IDW series, Godzilla in Hell. Um, another issue of Alan Moore's America's Best Comics magazine, Tom Strong, issue number 15. Uh, from Wildstorm, Stormwatch, the post-human division. Vision um, volume, issue number two, back in February 07. And then the main authority series. Um, I can't remember which volume this was. It must be a later one, obviously, because it's September 2010, issue number 24. Um, on to Dynamite. I love myself a little bit of Flash Gordon and Jeff Parker writing him. Issue number four and issue number six. Hearing a lot of people talking about Black Mask, uh, a kind of smaller publishing company, up and coming. Um, this is Space Riders. Um, like I said, I'd heard a lot of, quite a few people talk about it on YouTube. I 
these kind of comics, unless you know about them and order them from my comic book guy, you're not going to see these on the shelves just to pick them up and give them a go. So it was nice to, to find these because um, I did find a few of them. I looked at the art style and I absolutely adored it. Issue number one. Issue number three and issue number four. Uh, lots of kind of psychedelic, space, epic um, greatness really. It, it's a lot of fun, great art style, kind of reminded me of Shaky Kane in a way, um, but brilliant stuff. Uh, from Dark Horse, still on my big Conan kick. I just love Kurt Busiak's run on Conan and all the other stories he did. And um, this is issue zero. And then I think this was a reprint just to kind of, um, I'm sure it was, people can tell me otherwise, or maybe this was just a kind of introductory offer for $1. It's issue one of Brian Wood and Becky Cloonan's um, run on this. The artwork is very different. Obviously, it's Becky Cloonan. She's much more a, a kind of underground, independent artist. Um, but it was still great stuff. Really enjoyed reading that. Colours by Dave Stewart as well. And finally, Conan the Avenger, issue number 17. This is the current run. Fred Van Lenty apparently doing a great job. And again, some of these stories of what I have read, because I don't have a lot of the Avenger ones, uh, have been brilliant. I, I just lap these up. I love the stories. Really, really happy to find this small run of um, Harrow County. Uh, these, this is one of those books that you know I heard so many people talk about. Said it was absolutely fantastic, but I just came too late to the party. I, I mean, these were fifty p each, like I've said at the beginning of the video. Um, but I'm just hoping he does a kind of oversized deluxe book because this is a fantastic book uh, I don't know if I can jump on now I might be able to find the other issues at a cheap price as well but Cullen Bunn and Tyler Crook just doing an amazing horror story very kind of old school um, there's issue number three um, issue number four I like like it says they've got all these comments on there I don't know if I'll just bring that down slightly so you can see um oh let's leave it at that but you know Mark Millar said genuinely creepy and engaging and it is creepy it's proper good horror um uh, fair um and finally issue number five I managed to to find in the long boxes um, Frankenstein Underground. Um, this was a, a short mini series from Dark Horse that came out a couple of years ago. I picked up the first two issues um, just because they were on the shelves and I was kind of interested. It was one of those books that if it's on the shelf, I will buy it. Again, it's one of those kind of books that my um, comic book shop will only buy in if people order it after, say, the first two issues. So I already have the first two issues. Managed to find issue number four. And issue number five from the great Mike Minola, um, very Hellboy-esque. Uh, Mike Millar again, Jupiter's Circle, issue number three. I have four, five and six. I don't think I've got issue one and two, so I'm I'm searching those out. But um, I do like the, um, the, the art style that um, Wilfred Torres is doing on these. Um, finally, it's the Mice Templar. This is volume five. Um, I think this is, it's either finished or it's coming to the end of its kind of volume, but I managed to pick up the first uh, four or five issues. Missing issue two though, that's issue one. Issue three. Issue four. Issue five. And then finally, uh, this was a four issue mini series. Someone recommended it. I managed to find um, the other issues in a 50p bin, um, kind of black and white um, art called Cutter. Um, it was okay. It wasn't anything out of this world, um, but for 50p each, you're not gonna say no. 
Okay, on to the DC books. Again, not many. The bulk of this was uh, Marvel stuff, but I got quite, uh, well, a few um, DC books, filling in a few gaps, Countdown to Adventure, have a few odd issues here and there, but I didn't have issue three. Countdown to Mystery, I have the first three issues. Um, now I have issue four, issue number six. And issue number seven, love the incorporation of, you know, all the DC magic occult type characters. Um, great stuff. Pick these as and when I find them. I found the first five issues um, quite a while back and I've been picking this up here and there. Simon Dark. Um, it's based in the Gotham universe. Um just a, a kind of spooky, uh, kind of dark DC story from Steve Niles and Scott Hampton. Thought I'd try out Grayson, issue number one from the New 52, which actually was kind of a fun read. Uh, might kind of poke me into buying it in trade. Uh, not something I'm looking to add to, to my pull list. Uh, found a couple more of the Before Watchmen series. Um, this is Comedian issue number two of six and Night Owl issue one of four. Next one I was very excited to find. I know Dr. Monkeybot found it as well and he found it for cheaper. This was one of the more expensive buys I paid four pound for this um, but it is in, in quite nice shape and of course it's Jack Kirby. It's just great stuff. Let's look at the cover. Um, Mantis coming out from the comic book comic book um, cover almost. Just a great, great um, book to have in my collection. Now the dreaming. Now these are very, very hard to find. Um, I've I've found anyway. Um, I have a few here and there of the later issues, but the dreaming was uh, a spin-off. Uh, I believe after the Sandman, um, but it's to do with all that universe, but centering on all the other characters around in um, the the Sandman universe. Um, so you have Cain and you have Abel, you've got Eve in there, you've got Matthew the Crow, Goldie the Gargoyle, um, and just many, many more. And they're kind of like three or four issues per story. Sometimes they're one shots, but they're all done by um, different um, writers and artists. Almost kind of like an anthology series, only, you know, it's a story um, per few issues. But um, great... Um, Great covers by, um, I want to say Dave Stewart. Dave McKean, sorry. Dave McKean, yes. Um, but just great reads. Love this. Nice kind of embellishing on the Sandman universe. Keeping it very um, true to it. Neil Gaiman was a consultant in this. Uh, but just a, a really uh, fun uh, read looking at all the other characters. So managed to pick up quite a few issues of these that's the final issue well not the final issue but the issue i found issue number 18 and that was it for dc okay finally and the bulk of my haul is marvel um coming from all um eras um of of the marvel universe but there was this one stall that was selling a great many up-to-date issues. Um, and not just Marvel, not just DC. There was Image in there. There was Dark Horse. There, there was every one of them. So don't start saying, oh, it's because Marvel and DC put up so many comics. They buy them all and, you know, they can't sell them. Th this wasn't the case. It was the run of all publishers. Um, so I thought I'd play around and get some more Secret Wars, given that these were all 50p, I get some more of the Secret Wars tie-ins, I already have Korvac Saga issue 1, I managed to finish that off, so it's issue number 2 number 3 number 4 then um, the the Western type of um, Secret Wars tie-in 1872 uh, issue number 1 and issue number two, Future Imperfect by Peter David, issue number one, 
and issue number two. Uh, Ghost Races, issue number one. I think I've got issue number three of this as well. Um, Agents of Atlas. This is actually a, a, a very cool one-shot. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't make this a kind of three or four-part series, um, but there was plenty to get um, your teeth into on this. Um, it was a 4.99 book, but luckily picked it up for 50p. But it that was it. That was a fun, enjoyable read. X-Men 92, issue number four. And then Squadron Sinister, issue number one. Issue number two. I've got issue number three already. This is issue number four. Uh, finishing off, I hope, I believe I'm right in saying this, issue number three of Years of Future Past. Um, issue 2 of Secret Wars Battle World. Uh, Secret Wars 2, number 1. This, I believe, was a one-shot. It's like a, an anthology series, and it's basically them having a little bit of fun um, at kind of like, basically, Jonathan Hickman, um, and how, you know, was he going to be able to wrap up the original story to everyone's kind of everyone's um what's the word i'm looking for i don't know what i'm trying to say <laughs> but doing an, an ending that was suitable for the readers um it was fun it, it it doesn't take itself too seriously um picked up invincible iron man issue two i had quite a bit of fun with issue one i found i got that on i think it was free comic book day last year um maybe not last year because that's a bit far but i got it for a pound anyway um and managed to um, pick up um issue two some more bucky barnes the winter soldier by alice cotton marco rudy great art and good storytelling in this this is issue number three and issue number five Furthering on my new Avengers pre-Secret Wars run, issue number six, more Jonathan Hickman and Steve Epting. And finally, I think this is the last issue proper of Inhuman, again, just before the Secret Wars began, issue number 14. The last issue, I believe, was the annual. Um, I need to, to find that to finish the series off. So that's the first batch of books. Um, now this is the series, um, oops, I'm going to have to start collecting this now because you can't not leave behind um, 50p Moon Knights. Uh, this is the only one I believe that's got the 15p horrible variant price tag on it but um, there's a nice big run of this here, um, issue number three. Issue number four, uh, issue number six, oh, some more 20p variants, oh. uh, issue number seven, number eight, some great um, Sinkovich uh, art uh, covers coming up, um, number nine, number ten, number eleven. Number 12, 13, 14, looking forward to getting into this, 15, 16, and they are in really good shape really um, for, for the age they are. Um, issue number 18, 19, 20, 21, love that cover, 22, move them out the light, 23, another great cover by Sinkovich, <coughs> issue number 24, 27, 28, 35, double-sized issue featuring the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Issue number 36, 
bit of Doctor Strange going on there by the looks of it. And issue number 37. So that was um, the kind of, I think this is the 80s. All right, or the 90s? Or the 80s. Yes, the 80s run of, of Moon Knight. Uh, then there was this four issue mini series. Um, I managed to find the first two issues in a 50p uh, box, but then had to pay a little extra for the final, uh, sorry, six issue mini series. I had to um, pay a little extra for the last few issues, but this is issue one Fist of Conchu Moon Knight. Number two. Number three, and then I had to pay a pound instead of 50p, oh dear me, for the rest of the issues. Uh, number four, number five, and number six, which finishes that run off. But guess what? I'm going to have to start collecting the rest of that Moon Knight series. Uh, moving on. <laughs> Um, some bits and bobs of Fantastic Four, one of the series that I'm trying to collect of the main um, original series, but there were also some offshoots um, when Fantastic Four first ended again. Um, they changed to... Um, well, it was still FF, but it also started for the Future Foundation. Human Torch presumably dead, so they um, brought in Spider-Man to replace him. That's issue one. Uh, then there was this Marvel Knight series just called Four. Um, I, I, it was kind of a, supposedly a more mature title. Um, much Not as far as their Max series, but they could deal with um, uh, some bigger issues. Um, that's issue 24. Issue number 26. And issue number 27. I think I've only got one or two issues left of this to complete the run. Uh, just pick this up on a whim. The official Marvel index to the Fantastic Four. Again, it was a 50p, so... Mm. Um, Incredible Hulk. Um, I pick these up as and when. I actually really enjoy reading this. It's one of those series where I always think, well, really back in, you know, the 80s, what could they really have been doing with Incredible Hulk? Um, not a character at the time that I was particularly interested in, but some of these stories are really good. Um, and I just... It's just a really fun read. So if I see them for 50p, I'll pick them up. Um, issue 356. So there was a nice big run of these in the same box that I found uh, Moon Knight in. 357. 378. Grey Hulk up against Santa. <laughs> um, 383 versus the Abomination. 384. 387. 390. Part of the War and Pieces three part storyline. Part 33392 three, of the same storyline. 397. Part 1 of Ghost, Ghost of the Past. Uh, 398, Part 2. 399, Part 3. Uh, 401, bit of a silver surf in there by the looks of it. 405. 408. 409. 410. 412 with a she hulk in there as well. 421. 426. So that was the Incredible Hulk run. Uh, these three issues have finished off my Ultimate X Men uh, run. I had to pay £2 each for these, but um, I've looked for these high and low. Um, so as soon as I saw them, I thought, right. Let's just get them. Let's get Ultimate X-Men run finished. So issue three, issue number four, and finally, and just get that off, issue number five. So that's my Ultimate X-Men run completed. Very happy to have finally done that. And finally, the last batch 
found a lot of Excaliburs. Um, this is a series that, yes, I do want to finish, and it is fun. It's good X um, X book. Um, like I say, it's a lot of fun. Nightcrawler and um, Captain Britain, um, Shadow Cat, uh, and Megan in this, which is all a lot of fun. But it's one of those series that you know. Unless there's something better to buy, I'll, I'll kind of leave them behind because I know I'm always going to find them. Um, issue number 9, 19, 20, 22, part of the cross time caper, 23, 31, 33, 36. 37, bit of Doctor Doom in there as well, 39, 43, 52, 54, Excalibur always likes to um, have a little humour going through it, 56, 57, 58, 62, and that's all the Excaliburs. Now, although this has been damaged to hell, it was only 50p. Someone's tried to keep the spine from coming apart and sellotaped it all. Uh, really couldn't leave this cover behind just for the cover alone. I think it's absolutely awesome. Um, Conan the Adventurer from Marvel Comics, issue number six. Um, like I say, I've always said, Conan, I'm kind of like really digging at the moment. Um, eight issue limited series from Marvel Fallen Angels with the New Mutants. Um, found almost all of this. It's issue one, issue three, issue number five and issue number seven. So all the odd numbers. I need to find all the even numbers now. A um, little bit more of Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four versus the X-Men, issue number three and issue number four. I don't know, to be honest, how the hell this um, got into my pile. I don't collect Web of Spider-Man, never have. Um, I'm unlikely to start, um, but we've got issue 25. And then finally, um, some couple of issues of Dazzler, issue number 25 and issue number 40 and that is my haul thank you all for watching hope you found something that um, piqued your interest there and maybe you want to go out and collect it now sorry about that <laughs> take care bye bye